The United Nations Security Council has demanded a halt to the siege of Sudan's El Fashar city by the paramilitary rapid support forces and an immediate end to fighting. This, as the UN described the devastation as the largest displacement of a population in the world. David Sheen is a professor of African studies at George Washington University. He told viewers Gene Du Ofor that the prospects for an immediate end to the conflict are dim because the world is not paying enough attention. Unfortunately, many African issues do tend to get a lower priority than certain other parts of the world. European issues, at least in the American context, to get more attention. Issues in the Middle East tend to uh, attract more interest generally than do issues in Africa. There are exceptions. I mean, you've had, for example, the, the very serious famine in Ethiopia in the mid-1980s that got enormous attention in um, the United States, including sending of troops to Somalia. For whatever reason, the situation in Sudan has been overwhelmed by what is going on in places like Ukraine and Gaza. Does that fit the narrative that Africa is actually not important, not just to the United States, but to Europe for whatever reason? I think that's overstating the case. I think Africa is deemed to be important, but it is competing with the rest of the world for attention. And if what is taking place in Sudan today were happening more or less in isolation, I think you would see a lot more attention focused on Sudan. But it's difficult for governments around the world to focus on a region that is considered to be sort of more remote. It's partly just a question of bad luck of um, having this crisis break out at a time of stiff competition. With the devastation going on and efforts thus far to bring all the parties to the table for peace, have we gotten to a point of no return? As a former diplomat, it's hard for me to ever acknowledge that one reaches a point of no return. Diplomats are constantly looking for the bright side of solving an issue. Certainly, it has been a very dismal experience uh, dealing with Sudan and watching the international community deal with Sudan. And it's not just Western countries. The same situation with countries like China and Russia and India. They're paying even less attention to Sudan than the West is. At least the United States and the European countries are providing humanitarian aid. The U.S. is the largest provider of humanitarian aid. But in terms of a political solution, I really am pessimistic about how this is going to play out. And a lot of the problem has to do with the two factions fighting in Sudan today. The leaders of both groups seem committed to continuing with the fighting. They don't seem to be the least bit inclined to compromise on anything. And when you have that kind of a situation, it is exceedingly difficult for outside groups to uh, have a major impact upon what is happening on the ground in the country if neither side is willing to compromise. David Shane is professor of African Studies at George Washington University. He spoke with viewers Kennedy Ford. UN peacekeepers have started de deploying troops in more areas of the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo to deal with a new wave of violence from various armed groups. Fahan Kwak, deputy spokesman for UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, said on Wednesday that the decision to deploy troops came after members of the Zaire and Kodeko armed groups clashed at a mining site about 40 kilometers from Bonilla in Ituri province. According to the latest report by UN experts, the war has escalated partly because of the actions of the voluntary combatants for the defense of the homeland who, while fighting against the rebels, are also becoming a source of insecurity for civilians. Wazalindo have often claimed they are defending their homeland and are fighting against the M23 in North Kivu. The government has since banned them from carrying weapons in Goma and the provincial capital. We have taken a number of decisions in particular. We no longer want to see any voluntary combatants for the defense of the homeland in town with a weapon, said Major General Peter Chirimuami in Kuba military governor of North Kivu. While the government says those opposed to foreign interference should be supported, it too is concerned about the atrocities. Patrick Moyala, your government spokesman, said 
we cannot prevent these Congolese from defending their homeland because on the other side, you have people who came to massacre, but that should in no way be an excuse for attacking civilians. Since May 25th, a series of attacks from the Islamic Allied Democratic Forces in Ituli and North Kivu provinces has led to 100 civilian deaths, UN figures show. This makes ADF now the country's biggest headache after the M23. The ADF are not inherently Congolese, but originally from Uganda, where they are branded terrorists. The ADF are the reason North Kivu has been plunged into a mourning since late last month. They have lived in the eastern Congo forest since 1995, but they have been conducting most of their attacks in Uganda. The latest deadly attacks took place in Beni territory where the Ugandan and Congolese armies are supposed to be operating since November 2021, the two armies have been tracking down the ADF in a joint operation. Since mid-October 2023, ADF military activities have intensified, particularly in the northern part of Beni territory and in south of Ituri province. The ADF remained the armed group that committed the highest number of murders in the DRC in 2023, with more than a thousand people killed, mainly civilians, the report by UN experts states. Despite this massacre, the Congolese government asserts that operation had limited the assailants' might. Operations to track down these terrorists have made it possible to neutralize several of them and free a good number of civilian hostages, said a government dispatch. The escalation of violence is raising concerns. However, Bruno Rumaquiz, the UN humanitarian coordinator in DRC, expressed deep concern about the continuing violence and the deterioration in the humanitarian situation. If this violence persists, it risks further aggravating the already precarious humanitarian situation in the provinces of Ituri, North Kivu and South Kivu, he said. Here, more than 900,000 newly displaced people were registered between January and April 2023, bringing the total number of displaced people in these three provinces to more than 5.6 million out of a total of 7.3 million in the country. According to the UN, the number of victims continues to rise, particularly as a result of violence perpetrated by armed actors. In the first five months of this year, more than 470 people were killed in Ituli in a violent incident against civilians in the territories of Dujugu, Idumo, and Mambasa, where the ADF and the local armed group Kodeko operate.